Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I am going to talk about how we can actually automate or how you can actually modify RE frameworks into a linear process. So before you understand this concept, I also want to explain you what is a linear process, what is a transactional process, and in which processes, which framework would be, would be more suitable and more better. Okay, which, which uh, framework we should actually opt for which process. So to give you some clear idea and understanding, I just... Uh, have this. So for all of you who don't know what exactly is a linear process and how we can adapt linear framework for a linear process, first I'll explain what is linear process. And later I will um, modify RE framework into a linear process with three simple steps. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to explain is a linear process. So what is a linear process? So basically, <clears throat> Uh, when you wanted to execute certain process and it like, like let's let's take an example of RE framework. OK, so you are executing certain items from the queue and you will be keep on iterating or performing the same process until the items in the queue become zero. So this we all know it's a transactional process. That means you keep on doing the same process for different queue items. Right. So the queue item, we call it as a transaction. So this process, we call it as a transactional process. That means you keep on iterating through all of these items. That means you keep on processing, performing the same steps in the process. That's a transactional process. But what is a linear process? You will do these steps only once. Whatever the steps are there and you will do it only once. There is no complex scenarios or complex methodologies involved over here. It's a simple, straightforward, one directional process. So if if you let's consider these are the steps that you wanted to do in a process. So in such case, what you should do just, uh, you know, you will have the login module, download module, read the file, add items to the queue and log out and close the application. So this is a one time process. This process should execute only once. So you can ask me then what is the point of re framework we can just directly keep it in the uh you know normal process itself right but re framework will help us with more capabilities like you know whether it can be exception handling or whether it can be reporting or whether it can be modularizing the data or modules, right? So you can have the login module in the initialization portion. All of such things you can have it in the RE framework. And also it is easy to have this, uh, to have the reporting capabilities. So in such way, you can use the RE framework and also it will be very much easy to just convert RE framework into the linear process. So how you can actually do this, right? How you can actually perform this. So, and also one more thing is, um, you can have the data of this, like, you know, what is the status of this particular transaction item? So if there is one transaction item, so I will, I'll explain you how you will do the steps and all of that. But just to give you an overview of what is a linear process, this is it. It's a simple process which will execute only once. You don't have to keep iterating anything over there. So it's a quite simple, straightforward process, right? And what is a transactional process? You understood. So for transactional processes, mostly we will prefer RE framework because of all the inbuilt capabilities and the adaptions that it have for us. And now how uh, we can do the processing simply. So for that, what I will do, I will just explain you by just taking one small RE framework template. So I'm just taking RE framework template over here. Then just give linear process. So I hope this point is or clear for you. So now I will just explain you how you can keep the RE framework as it is and then how you can actually convert that into just by doing sm uh, small changes here and there, how you can actually convert this RE framework into our linear framework.
so that you can adapt this for your linear processes without any much hassle. Okay, so let's wait. Yeah. So this few things, so the few changes that you have to follow here are, So you all know what all these stages are and how you can actually, you know, switch from one state to another state and how the transitions happen and all of this, I believe. If not, I'm going to shoot a really soon a new video on how the RE framework architecture is and everything, all such things. So you can also watch and learn from my videos or you can also check out Academy that has a lot of videos and solutions and practice uh, tests for these things. Yes. And I'm also going to release the use cases on uh, linear framework soon. So you that will give you even more understanding because we we do uh, a small demo, we do a small project in this. So it will give you more clear idea and understanding. So now I will just quickly go into the get transaction data because the whole major thing that you do, uh, you have to do will be here. So in the get transaction data, we have the workflow get transaction data XAML. Okay, so here what you have to do for the transactional process, what we should what we usually do is we will go for get transaction item every single time. But if it's a linear process as we execute this only once, what we have to do here is we will just take an if activity because our requirement is we should go and fetch the get transaction item only once and we will process it. Once after you process it, you will not go into the process again, but you will end the process. This is the logic. This is clear, right? Linear process means we will just, <clears throat> linear process means we will just execute the uh, process only once and after which we will be going into the end process. That means we will stop the process, right? So for that, I'm implementing a logic here. So you just take a if condition and only once that means when in transaction number dot equals one okay when this is equals to one only then i am getting the transaction item right and in other cases i will not get the transaction item because i want to end the process Right, so this is the first logic, and let's assign what is the value that you should assign here out transaction item value. Is nothing. Right, so what happens then. If the transaction number other than one, so let's say if it is coming for second time, then what happens? It will assign that out transaction item to nothing. So which will end the process. Okay. And now other thing is like, it's a, it is like, you know, you to have a transaction item. So the transaction item can be anything, it can be Q item or it can be anything. So we, for that, we just have to make some small changes because to just have the transaction item, what I'm doing over here is in the initialization part, I'm just adding one logic where it will add the transaction item. I'm just adding Q item. And that too, I'm adding it in the first run block. So whatever will be over here will be executing only once. So I'm adding, I have a queue already. I'm just adding one item into this queue. Just say item. Uh, linear item. Just for, you know, processing this. That's it. You can just have this thing. And most of the time, um, you like, you know, when we are doing this process, we can just delete the 
exception set transaction status here we have the particular module happening or you know having there for three times so one is in the success other one is in the business exception other one is in the application exception so let's say at any case if you don't want to uh, have this anyway because we are not going to retry in case of system exceptions you can just delete it because that doesn't make much sense it just adds one more q item into your block but it will not be retried anyway right so in such case you can just delete the set transaction status application exception uh, module okay where is that exactly okay this set transaction set or you can just directly go in here and delete the set transaction status but however it is just that uh, you are you know trying to uh, just maintain the status of it whether it's an application exception or business exception or it's a successful scenario okay so i hope you got some idea about how you can actually convert this process into a linear process all you have to do is whatever your transaction item that you are adding you just have to add that item and uh, if it's not a queue item you can delete the set transaction status and um, you can you all you have to do in the get transaction I, data is before you take the get transaction item you just have to add in one logic if it is the transaction number is one for the first transaction number, only then you're going into process. That means you're getting the transaction item. For rest of them, you are allocating it to nothing. That's it. I hope this is clear for you. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. And soon I will be making a use case on this, how you can use linear framework for your projects. So that video will be even more clear because we will be running through each and every scenario and we will be seeing everything in detail. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that will give you even more clarity. So I will be releasing that video soon. Do not miss that video. Do subscribe to my channel and also let me know in the comment section what you like about this. And if you face any issues, also do let me know. And also you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn profile, uh, which is Harika Mudiam. Feel free to message me if you have any concerns. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video next time. Do subscribe. That gives me a lot of motivation to come up with new content.